All right, everyone. So here is this week's review. Hopefully, I will be able to sound coherent. I did not have a whole lot of time this week to plan a well thought out review, but I was able to do some work. It's not like I'm going into this completely blind. I I didn't get to prep as much as I would have liked because I had a bunch of other stuff going on this week. It's just it's just kind of crazy, you know. So as you can see from the little title thing from down below, I'm going to be reviewing Star Wars The Last Jedi. And like most films that caused a bit of a stir in the fan base, I'm not going to take time out of the review to explain the controversy the way it would normally be done. Because usually when there's controversy surrounding a film, I think what most critics do is that they address the controversy first and then proceed to do the review as they had initially planned. But in this case, I feel like the controversy I can talk about while I'm doing the review as opposed to a prologue of sorts. So with Star Wars The Last Jedi, it's basically the second chapter in the third trilogy of the Star Wars franchise. And much like how The Force Awakens made a lot of references to A New Hope, this one, it's kind of like Empire Strikes Back in tone. And what I mean is that it, it, it doesn't really make a whole lot of callbacks to the Empire Strikes Back, but it does go in a more darker direction than The Force Awakens. Because, I mean, once again, much like Force Awakens, we have one of the main characters from the original trilogy dies. And I'm not going to put this in the title, I'm just going to say spoilers, but we'll get to that. And there's also a big showdown at the end with those big uh, at, -AT walkers. So, to get into this movie... um. Ray, at the end of the last movie, has located Luke and has sought him out to try and find ways to become in tune with the Force. And I think right off the bat, you can tell that Luke is going to be a completely different character now. There's been a lot of complaints about how Luke is not the way he should be. This is completely out of character and yada, 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 yada. But honestly, with this version of Luke... I feel like it's kind of a worthy interpretation. I was I was really thrown by the way he was acting in the movie at first, and I think Mark Hamill even objected to the way Ryan Johnson was uh, um, having Luke be portrayed in the film. But the more I think about it, the more it makes sense, because the movie has... I mean, they, they set this up in The Force Awakens that Luke has been off the grid for decades... And it was around that same time that Kylo Ren came into play. And they do have a backstory where you realize that the reason why Luke tried to kill Kylo Ren, known as Ben at the time, was because he sensed evil in Ben, freaked out, tried to kill him, and then a fight ensued that resulted in Ben becoming evil and Luke uh, being unable to live it down for obvious reasons. So, I feel like the backstory was really kind of rushed. I, I think they could have dove a little more into the psychological aspects of the story to kind of show the guilt Luke, Luke felt, like feeling horrible that he tried to kill one of his own students and feeling horrible that he almost allowed evil to rise again and he ultimately ended up... Because the movie is kind of a redemption story for Luke, in a way. Because it does end with Luke using the Force to teleport himself to fight Kylo Ren in one final fight where he ultimately gives his life. So I think that was kind of a nice character arc for Luke. It is depressing. It is sad. But it is kind of a good payoff. that He starts off as the grouchy curmudgeon who doesn't really want to get involved. Um, training Ray kind of helps him find his uh, inner heart and his optimism again. And he does become brave enough to fight his biggest mistake and his own demons at the end, which I thought was a really powerful uh, storyline for Luke. 
who pretty much at the end of the original trilogy seemed to be pretty much a fully matured man. But this one, it does kind of give, it does sort of take the idea of Luke being on his own. It, it does come up with some pretty solid ideas why he is the way he is. And it is kind of a funny contrast between Ben Kenobi, who did try to hide the past, but he was more at peace with it, where Luke is more bitter and angry, which I think is kind of a interesting idea. It is well executed. They could have spent a little more time with it, but I think it was a great idea. And I'm pretty sure there are going to be some people who watch this review that are probably going to have fantasies about them force choking me to death unless I recant. I'm pretty sure. But then again, not many people watch my YouTube channel, so I doubt I'll have that many people beating on my door trying to kill me. Um, as far as the other characters are concerned, um, well, Luke and Rey, the, the, they're... I feel like Rey was a little more... I think she's a little more wide-eyed than Luke was when he started to train. But I do kind of like that chemistry that Daisy Ridley and Luke have, which is kind of like the the grouchy... <laughs> The grouchy old man with his niece trying to learn how to work things out. There, there, there was a nice camaraderie there. Um, Finn doesn't really get much to do in this movie except for going a side quest with Rose. And I really feel sorry for that poor actress who took a lot of cyber abuse over having this two and a half hour movie diverge into a... 20, 30 minute subplot, which kind of connects to the main story, but it kind of doesn't. And she got a lot of crap for her character. Honestly, I don't think Rose is a bad character. I think she was given a story that was semi irrelevant to the main narrative, but that's not the actress's fault. She's just doing what the director and the writer told her to do in the script. And Ryan Johnson directed this movie, and I believe he also co-wrote the script, so that's not the actress's fault. She's just doing what she was hired and paid to do, you know? There, there was no need to bully her off of social media. That was just, that, that was just ridiculous. There's, th this is probably the most divisive good movie I've seen in a long time, you know? I think this movie is probably the best thing Star Wars has done since Empire, really. But even then, nothing's going to top Empire Strikes Back. But this one can rival it because it went in a different direction than the other two stories of a trilogy. It had a darker tone. It had a more mature themes and more psychological issues to deal with. It was a little more interesting. And another thing that I liked is that with the exception of Luke's backstory not getting as much detail as it could have, I felt like this movie had a better idea of how to space out developing other characters and storylines and how to also come up with other payoffs. Because I also like the story with the Laura Dern character where you think she's trying to sabotage your resistance, but you realize that she was actually trying to help and sort of put Poe in check. I do think that they could have made that a little more obvious for the audience without being over the head with it, but I liked it. I, I thought it was okay. Um, overall, I, I don't really understand why people complained. Okay, I, I can understand a little bit why people complained about this movie when it came out, but I feel like people are throwing punches at shadows with this movie. It's really unwarranted. Um... And to go into more detail about the climax with the final fight at the end, um, that was really cool. That was really cool to watch the student against teacher, the ultimate failure. And like I said, it was a great way to cap off Luke's story arc in the movie. I think I would have liked it a little more if that was actually Luke on the planet physically there to fight, but him using the force to project his body... That's a cool idea, I guess. Overall, I think this was a really good movie. Very solid. Better than Force Awakens. Definitely the best of the sequel trilogy. Um, 
there really isn't a whole lot else to say. So I guess this isn't a bad review so much as a short one because I couldn't think of a lot of stuff to say, really. Um, that's about it. Um, next week I'll finally, finally get to conclude the Star Wars series with The Rise of Skywalker. I don't really have a lot of nice things to say about that movie. But, on a happier note, on Monday I will do my guitar cover for the next Bruce Springsteen song, and I will see you guys then. Take care.